Hi guys, and uh, for those of you that have subscribed after watching the first video, thank you very, very much. Um, to those who are new, um, following along on this video, welcome. Um, it's truly um, awesome to be doing these videos and finally committing to learning the old Panasonic Lumix G9. Now before I start, I'd just like to um, suggest that you please watch part one of the video of the series of videos which just covers the overview and introduction to the Panasonic G9. Um, that's kind of important before you get stuck into this video, because we are going to be unpacking the camera setup and uh, what are the best settings moving forward. Another quick thing to mention, if you can please make sure your firmware is up to date. And um, finally, I've got a little bit of a bonus tip for at the end, just around customization, which uh, you could find useful. Thank you. Okay, so I'd just like to cover what it is you can expect in this video. I'm going to break breaking it down into two segments, really. First segment is going to be around the camera setup. What are the best setup for us to make sure we cover exposure properly and also focus? And then some other small minor tweaks around the display and things like that, just to make us nice and efficient. Second one is around settings. What settings can we put on the camera and pretty much forget about it? And what are the other settings that are more dynamic and they change depending on the photography we're doing? So that's sort of going to be the format of the video. And I'll try and move through it quite quickly because I know what it's like. Time is a premium. And then, like I said, there's a little bit of a bonus tip at the end just around individual customization, which you're going to find quite handy. Um, so, yep, let's get into it. Alright guys, I just want to start off with your shutter um, speed and aperture dial. So currently mine is set to the back dial controls my aperture and the front dial controls my shutter speed. You do have the option of changing that. If you start, I'll go to the beginning of the menu, go to the customization spanner, hit the operation selection, go to dial set, and then you can assign that dial with either the front being aperture or the back being shutter speed you can also change the rotation so make sure you're happy with that because that's going to make sure that you're nice and efficient and comfortable with whatever the settings are while we're on the topic of exposure so our iso buttons on the top here next to the white buttons button just behind the um, shutter speed wheel um, you do have an, another option of selecting this rotating dial to be your ISO if you want to. And the way to do that is, while you're still in that dial set menu, just navigate down to control dial assignment. And as you can see, you've got an ISO setting there. If you select that, what that simply means now is, you can notice down at the bottom, your ISO is changing. Now, um, I personally don't like that because I feel you can sort of, you know, mistakenly rotate this dial while handling the camera. And unknowingly changing your ISO so but you may prefer it you may like it and that is an option to get your ISO nearby just another quick thing around ISO um, let me just go down to I think it's always tend to go the wrong way first Murphy's law back to our ISO increments which is part of our exposure folder as you can see i've got it set to one third increments so what that means is you can have it in one full sort of increments where it jumps up from 100 to 200 to 400 and so forth and so on i prefer setting it up on one third increments just makes a lot more sense gives you a bit more flexibility around your iso and um, that can only be a good thing so look guys, that sort of wraps up the camera setup around um, the exposure triangle, which is our aperture, shutter speed and ISO. The Lumix G9, as with all the Lumix cameras, has cameras have a huge amount of customization around it. This is just one of probably a few ways that things can be done. Um, and it's the way I've got some habits because of my G7 that I've been using when I was making video. Um, now the G9, there's some similarities. So just remember, these are just suggestions. You, there are other options and other ways of doing things. But anyway, that takes care of the exposure setup for the camera. 
All right, guys, I'm going to move on to focus now and the best or one of the setups around um, focus. What are our options? Now, the most significant change for me is typically if we were to shoot um, normally, we would half press the button and then fully press to take the photo, i.e. this is the front button. You've got your automatic focus single, where if you hold the button, um, it'll just focus once, release it, and it will lock the focus, or you have autofocus continuous, where if you keep the button depressed, it'll continuously focus. But this is using the front button, and then fully depressing, we take the shot. We all sort of know that, and we've also got our manual focus option down there. So the most significant change I've sort of made when it comes to focus is I've used, I'm using back button focus. So what does that mean is I've assigned this little, um, this button over here to back button focus. And I just think with this cluster of buttons here, all sort of handling focus, I mean this function one button brings up all the fo focus modes. We've got all our fo different focus settings over there. We've got our joystick over here to help us with focus. It just makes sense to have this back button as the focus button, freeing up the front wheel complete, I beg your pardon, the front button just to shoot. So while we're holding this button down, you can press this button continuously, provided you've locked your finger on that button and it's focusing, you can shoot to your heart's content. I put a little um, impromptu clip of my daughter um, just demonstrating very quickly in 30 seconds what that looks like. So as you can see with Tony standing down at the bottom there, she's in focus already because I'm holding the back button focus. And as she walks towards the camera, while my finger's depressed on that button, she stays in focus continuously. That is pure, actual, continuous focus. I should really have um, pushed the shutter button while she was doing that for me, but um, we were pressed for time. She had to go out. So um, that's only a little clip. I'll try and do a more in-depth video around back button focus because I believe it's flipping awesome and uh, just personally it works for me. And this is how you set it up. So if you go to the menu, um, just make sure you start at the beginning. Once again, back to the old customization menu um, in the operation tab let me just go to the top that's right you see there we've got our AFAE lock button and we've got our shutter AF on button the first thing we want to do is put that shutter off so what is that doing it's taking care of this front button and making sure that that's no longer um, working for autofocus then we go to our AFAE lock button and all we want to do is put that on over there right that's all we want to do is put that on so now what is that doing it is locking our back button focus and like i said i want to do some field trips and some demos around how this works because it does warrant a separate video if i include it in here this video is just going to be too long so look out for that video make sure you subscribe hit the like button hit the bell button because i will be doing a back button focus video so continuing with our focus settings, um, if you go to the function one button, which is a shortcut to all the um, automatic focus modes, I typically just leave it on this one area button and it seems to serve me quite well. Um, it's reasonably small. You can make it really tiny, set it. You've got your joystick where you can move it to your heart's content. This comes in very, very handy if you're using the viewfinder, then you use the joystick and you simply hit the set button to set it. And that works very, very well. It finds focus and focus has been quite um, perfect, actually. Another thing quickly just around um, focus, if you navigate to our customization menu, hit the operation tab again, select that. You've got a function button set here right and set in record mode select that it's going to bring you up a little diagram of all the function buttons now in the front of the camera we've got two buttons function four and function five 
I've done a little research around this as to what would be the best um, customization for those buttons. And when it comes to taking photos, uh, obviously exposure is up there. Second to that would be your focus. And here we've got a focus, automatic focus on far and automatic focus on near. What does that mean in summary? Basically, sometimes the camera struggles to decide what to focus on. It'll focus on a closer object versus a further away object. You have now the autonomy when you set those buttons to tell the camera what to focus on. And that to me is a game changer. So I've thought that would be the best use for those two buttons. Automatic focus far, automatic focus near. Once again, separate little video will be done just to show how that works. So make sure you follow along, subscribe, because that video will be coming quite soon. So right, guys, that sort of concludes all the setup around focus. And as you can see, it's not it's not huge, but it, it does warrant some um, attention. I'd like to move on to um, the final part of the setup um, for the camera. And it's just around this display area over here. As you can see, you've got a mic over there, which is fine if you're using a lot of video. And then you've got this touch tab on the side here. I did try and get used to using this on the G7. There were some Wi-Fi things on there, but to be fair, I, I don't find it particularly useful. And if you want to clean up your screen a little bit, clean up your display, uh, you can actually switch those things off, and this is how you do it. So venture to the old menu button for the mic. Make sure you go to the video settings, and then just simply put your mic off over there. And make sure your mic level limiter is still on, which I think is a good idea. If we go back to our customization menu, we're going to go to our monitor display. There's a selection called touch settings on the fourth page. Once you select that, go to the touch tab and simply put that off. So now if you go back to our screen, our touch tab is gone and our mic um, level is also gone which is handy another quick thing while i do have your undivided attention is um is it in the operation tab i think so bear with me please one moment caller no it's not in there where was it um Dilla might be under here no it wasn't there uh, might be under operation yes yeah um just going, there we go. Constant preview. Make sure constant preview is on. What is constant preview, you may ask? Very good question. Constant preview is when you're making any sort of adjustments to your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, whatever the case may be, the display will preview exactly what that photo will look like, which is priceless will give you exactly an idea as to what that photo is going to look like. So you want to make sure that that is on. All right, guys, so that sort of concludes the camera setup. Uh, there is one other thing um, I might just quick, quickly mention. It's really part of the settings thing, um, and this is around our control dial over here. I think it's called the drive dial. You can either have it in a single shot mode, or you've got this multi burst mode or you got this super multi burst mode so um, i'm sort of migrating more to this one um, <laughs> historically i've been using the single shot but i'm going to be using this one because it just makes sense having a few more photos to choose from but look we'll unpack that a little bit more in the settings video now, when it does come to settings, a lot of these fall into like the, you know, set it, set it and forget it category. And a good place to start, I suppose, would be in the um, quick menu. So the quick menu has got our standard photo setting. If you're using RAW or you're using um, JPEG, if you're using JPEG rather, you can sort of change these things a little bit and the, the camera will make some adjustments to contrast and uh, saturation and so and so forth if you are shooting in raw obviously then you can control those things yourself yourself i've had a bit of a dabble in raw i think it does warrant um 
a separate video because it brings into uh, play that the whole post-production process, which is Adobe Photoshop, and uh, it does open up a whole other can of worms. So for the timing, if you're a complete beginner, I would just say, look, choose the absolute best JPEG um, setting, and we can take it from there. So keep it in standard. Uh, that's more for video. That's our aspect ratio, and this is that best um, JPEG setting I was talking about, and you can navigate to RAW if you are um, or favor with it or comfortable with it. Um, we spoke about our automatic focus modes. I just use the one area mode, but you can go and, I beg your pardon, let's just go down, and you've got custom, you've got two to five, you've got tracking, and then you've got human animal detect. Uh, you saw with that 30 second clip of Tony, my daughter, that's how um, that focus works, but I'll do another in-depth video around that. Um, what is this? This is just your burst mode, so you can change your burst mode for the control dial over there. Uh, what else do we have? Um, we don't have to go into that. That's our metering mode. I've just got it on multi-metering. Don't really need to change it. You can get to your aperture here. You can get the shutter speed, even your ISO. And automatic white balance um, just makes sense keeping it on automatic white balance. So that's sort of some default settings that, like I said, typically um, will stay the same. And then um, obviously there's some dynamic stuff, which I'll talk about next. All right, and then when it comes to things that sort of change all the time, like I did mention on our drive dial over here, you can go to single shot or you can go to um, burst mode. Um, on the top here, we, we've got our manual mode, which I'm setting. Sometimes you just can't be bothered faffing around. You can go to automatic, um, intelligent auto, it's called. So those are sort of some dynamic uh, other settings that you can change. Um, with back button focus, you don't really have to move out of automatic focus continuous. When I do my video around that, I'll show you how automatic focus continuous and automatic focus single is actually combined into this one operation here, which makes life very, very handy. Another thing um, that changes all the time is obviously going to be our ISO. So um, you can move that around. Um, that's one of those things that typically changes. Oh, Obviously, our shutter speed is going to be changing all the time. Aperture is going to be changing all the time. Um, so, yeah, not a huge amount of things that change all the time. A lot of stuff is going to be in that set and forget category, which make life good, and some stuff um, not. All right, guys, coming to the end of this video, as promised, um, there's a little bonus tip I've got. This comes around individual customization, which works over and above, over and above this quick menu items that you've got here, which you must remember you've got access to very, very quickly. Um, but in addition to the quick menu, you've got this other option. So scroll down to the main tabs, move down to this little figurine over here, and you'll see my menu setting over there. Just hit that and hit the add button. Now you've got 32 pages of content that you can pretty much add there. So for example, if you feel, you know what, I'm always changing my quality from RAW to JPEG, select that, hit save, go yes, right, and uh, if you go back, there you see quality is in part of your menu now. So you can go to another one, hit add. Um, if you think, you know what, I'm always changing my photo style from cine like D to natural to whatever, uh, you can then select that one, hit uh, save, yes, and as you can see, um, if I go back, your quality and your photo style is now there. I'll do one more. Um, if you go add it, um, you can scroll down to, I'll just choose one that I typically change quite a bit. Uh, like long shutter noise reduction um, that we do use when we obviously doing night photography so um, instead of scrolling through the menu trying to find where that is just select it add it go yes and then bang you you've got your thing you can even sort them in a particular order if you want to 
and then you just um, sort it. So you will just think, well, I want my photo style up, and then um, just move it up and go select, and now photo style will be on the top. There it is. So look, guys, that's the bonus tip I was promised promised you. <laughs> so look, guys, I hope that was sort of a <laughs> summarized view of how you can set the camera up reasonably quickly um, to make sure your exposure um, access is primo, your focus is on point, and you're not faffing around um, trying to get focus sorted. So those are the two main areas I focus because that's probably the most important part of photography or videography, making sure our exposure is right, making sure our focus is right. And then there's a couple of display things, couple of setting items um, that's going to help us um, not worry about making decisions. Because I think when we're doing wildlife photography, we need split second action. You know, we can't be worrying about um, what settings we've got to um, change and things like that. So look, I didn't want to keep the video too long. I hope it's covered it in its entirety. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I'm sort of um, unpacking this as I go along. Um, yep, follow along. There's loads more videos to come. Thank you once again for subscribing. Thank you for your kind comments. I do appreciate it. And we will no doubt catch up in the next one. Over and out. Cheerio. Bye-bye.